generations had passed since the time of the prophet Noah, Satan had a solid grip on the nations, or so it seemed. Instead of trusting in the Lord, people trusted in their religions. Some nations worshiped the sun instead of the one who made it. Others bowed to the moon. The year was about 1925 BC. In a land northeast of Arabia lived an elderly man named Abram. Later, God changed his name to Abraham, meaning father of a multitude. Abraham was 75 years old. Sarah, his wife, was 65 and childless. Their parents and neighbors were idolaters, worshiping created things instead of the Creator. One day, the Lord said to Abraham, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. The Lord wanted to make a covenant with Abraham. If he would leave his father's family and go to an unknown land, then the Lord would do two great things with him. Number one, God would make Abraham the father of a great nation. Number two, through that new nation, God would bless people in every nation. If Abraham would trust and follow the Lord, he would become the father of a nation from which would come the prophets, the scriptures, and the savior of the world. What did Abraham do? By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. It was not easy for Abraham and his wife to leave their relatives and turn their backs on the family religion. Yet they chose to endure the criticism of their community in order to follow the one true God. To trust and obey God is not always easy, but it is always best. Abraham and his wife were old and had no children. Yet the Lord had promised to make Abraham the father of a great nation. How did Abraham react to God's impossible promise? Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness and he was called God's friend. Like all of Adam's descendants, Abraham was a sinner. But like Abel and Noah, Abraham offered sin offerings to God. Because Abraham believed the Lord and his promises, God credited righteousness to Abraham's record in heaven and gave him the gift of eternal life. Sarah also trusted in the Lord and God declared her righteous too. But it's hard to wait. After they had been in the land of Palestine for 10 years, hoping and praying that Sarah would get pregnant, they decided to help God fulfill his promise to give Abraham a son. Following a local custom, Sarah gave her Egyptian maid Hagar to Abraham. He slept with Hagar and she got pregnant and gave birth to a son. They named him Ishmael. About 13 years later, when Abraham was 99 and Sarah 89, Almighty God appeared to them again he told them that they would have a son and call him Isaac. The Lord also told Abraham, As for Ishmael, I will surely bless him, but my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to you by this time next year. A year later, Sarah gave birth to Isaac, the son of the promise. Look at the picture. Do you see Abraham and his wife looking up into the night sky? They are thanking the Lord for his faithfulness. Later, 
Hagar and Ishmael were sent away, but God was good to them too. God was with the boy as he grew up in the wilderness of Paran. He became an expert archer, and his mother arranged a marriage for him with a young woman from Egypt. Ishmael became the father of the mighty Arab people, whom God has blessed in so many ways. As for Isaac, he remained at home, caring for his father's cattle and flocks. Sometimes Isaac helped his father select a healthy lamb, kill it, and burn it on an altar for their sins. But neither Isaac nor his father could imagine the sacrifice God was about to require. God planned to use Abraham and his son to set before the world some prophecies and pictures of his plan to rescue sinners from sin and death. God also planned to test Abraham's faith to the extreme by asking him to do something dreadful, something that would not make sense until the test was over. At this stage in his life, Abraham had absolute trust in the Lord. Abraham knew God. Abraham knew that God is good and just. Yet, would Abraham be able to trust and obey him, even if what God asked him to do seemed wrong? Here is the story, straight from the scriptures. Some time later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and saddled his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, father, yes, my son. Abraham replied. The fire and wood are here, Isaac said. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. Did you hear what Abraham told his servants before he and his son climbed the mountain of sacrifice? We will worship and then we will come back to you. How could Abraham's son come back if he was to be killed and his body burned? The scripture says, Abraham reasoned that God could raise the dead. God had promised to make Isaac the father of a new nation through which the promised savior would come. God cannot lie. For Abraham, that was enough. Meanwhile, what was Isaac thinking? He knew he was a sinner and that he deserved to die for his sins. He also knew that God would accept a substitute. But today, they were going to a place of sacrifice without a ram or a lamb? It made no sense. So Isaac said to his dad, the fire and wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. Now let's continue the story. When they reached the place God had told him about, 
Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham and his son rejoiced. But what about the required sacrifice? Abraham looked up and there in a thicket, he saw a ram caught by its horns. Abraham's son would be spared the death penalty. God had provided a substitute. How did God rescue Abraham's condemned son? He provided a blemish-free, innocent animal to die in his place. Abraham looked up, and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. All these events pictured God's plan to send to earth a holy savior who would satisfy the requirements of the law of sin and death and rescue sinners from every nation on earth. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Why did Abraham name the mountain, the Lord will provide, instead of the Lord has provided? Had not God just provided a ransom? By naming the mountain, the Lord will provide, the prophet Abraham was foretelling the day when, on this same mountain, God himself would provide a sacrifice with blood so costly that God would accept it as full payment for the sin debt of the world, so that whoever believes in that sacrifice will not perish, but have eternal life. Some 1900 years after the prophet Abraham offered the ram on the altar, the promised savior himself would look back to this historic event and say, your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. As the smoke of the ram rose heavenward, God gave Abraham a glimpse of a future burnt offering that would be sacrificed on this same mountain ridge. Suddenly, Abraham's answer to his son's question, where is the lamb, took on a deeper meaning. God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. For Abraham and his son, God had not yet provided the lamb. He had provided a ram. Where was the lamb? At the right time, God himself would provide the answer.